Now it's hard to believe, but until the mid-90s, it seemed the world thought that if you did kung fu or karate, you were a tough and dangerous guy. Wrestlers were just strange individuals in leotards hugging men. But in 1994, a man appeared who changed everything. The Beast, who made everyone respect fighting. In his book, Dan Severn recalled his letter campaign to UFC leadership and their refusal to acknowledge him, contending that wrestling was not a martial art. However, persistence paid off, and they ultimately gave him a chance. And so, the UFC 4 tournament became a turning point in the history of the sport. It was not a night of triumph, but it was the night of the beast, Dan Severn. Dan was never a street fighter. What type of fool wanted to mess with that huge mustache? But in those years, Dan was already a famous pro wrestler. By age 17, he was an Olympian and a wrestling phenomenon. Newspapers wrote stories about him, but everything was halted by a knee injury, the likes of which 80s medicine could not yet cope. Little did we know, however, that if not for this injury, we may never have seen the beast in the octagon. Dan's next opponent was a big man, Marcus Bossett, a black belt in Shorin Ru Karate, who could easily tamp his opponent down to the floor, which was on full display in his previous fight. Bossett fought as a young man in addition to playing American football, equal parts tough and cool. The Beast already shed first blood in the cage, leading to a confident performance in his second bout, unlikely a good sign for Bossett. Old Dan exudes confidence, and where the audience was buzzing at Severn during the first, the audience was shouting in his honor during the second. At the outset, Bossett moves well and scores a powerful kick in the body of Severn. Dan felt this blow and admittedly was not eager to receive the second. An excellent pass through to the legs, but then Bossett found himself on the wrong side of the beast's strength. Severn performs an arm triangle choke and defeats Bossett. The technique was familiar to Dan from Japanese pro wrestlers, but failing to understand its subtleties, Severn nearly squeezed Bossett's neck to the point his head almost flew off. Four months later, Dan Severn returned to the octagon, and in his opening bout, he made such a big splash that the UFC 5 tournament became nicknamed the Return of the Beast. His opponent was veteran Joe Charles, who caught Kevin Rozier in an armbar just 14 seconds into UFC reserve fight. The guy is a dangerous judoka. He immediately attempted to make it a double or nothing, but Severn forcefully shoved him into the metal door of the cage. The Beast throws powerful knees to the head and even blows with his elbows. This is not the same kind of Severn that we saw earlier. Charles grabbed the cage, but the Beast literally rips him from it, the brutal power of an old school wrestler. And this is my favorite rear naked choke performed by Severn, both powerful and brutal. The next opponent of the Beast is Oleg Tiktarov. This was Oleg's first tournament in the UFC. Old Severn feared a repeat of Hoist Gracie, leaving him alert from the opening seconds of the fight. I assume that Oleg wanted to work in the guard knowing of Severn's wrestling base, but the beast grabs Tektara by the neck and lands a knee to the head. Severn is actively working on the ground, declining Oleg an opportunity to attempt a submission. The difference in physical strength is colossal, but few people know about Tektarov's willpower and ability to withstand hell in order to snatch a victory. The Beast had realized that it was impossible to finish off Oleg quickly and began to work more calculated. Oleg is trying to apply an armbar from his back, the most dangerous moment for Severn. The hand of the Beast is in a trap, but he found a way out with knees to Oleg's head, ultimately the undoing of the Russian fighter. Dan Severn confidently dominates on the ground, and now he threw the heaviest blows with his head. Tektarov's face turned into a bloody mask. 
realizing that Oleg was not going to give up, Big John McCarthy decided to stop the fight himself. The Bloody Severn shouts to an audience elated with what can only be described as a massacre. Dan Severn tallied one of the loudest victories of his career. Tektarov's will to win was on full display. No one knew that these two old school stars were destined for a rematch that proved to be an even more brutal fight. Severn had a final fight against the tough grappler, Dave Benito. Benito was good on the ground and threw awesome blows as one hefty brute. This fight was not an easy one, but the beast had an old school plan. Ingenious in its simplicity. Dave aggressively punches from clinches with a right hook. Then he throws solid uppercuts near the ropes. If a fighter reached the final in UFC, you knew he was deserving, but there is always a better guy. Severn presses Benito near the ropes and quickly hooks the opponent's leg. Closing this one out, Severn performs a Kimura, a classic technique in Sambo, defeating Benito. The Beast won his first championship title. The belt that Severn's team had constantly wore was a pro wrestling champion title and Dan was very proud of it. When Severn told UFC management that he intended to bring the wrestling title to the Octagon, they were not enthusiastic. Since they wanted to be an independent promotion, Dan insisted, and in the Octagon, he now raised not one, but two of his championship titles. In December 1995, Dan Severn entered the next UFC tournament, but it was not easy. Only champions or finalists of previous tournaments fought. The level of competition was outstanding. In the first fight, the late Patrick Smith, a finalist in UFC 2, was supposed to fight the Beast. But the medical board prevented Smith from fighting. Smith was replaced by the huge Paul Varlins, the polar bear. Not technical, but a worthy competitor that always fought against the best. Varlins, with a self-inflicted fall, loses his balance, and in the guard, he was simply useless. The elite wrestler easily goes into side control and throws an arm triangle choke. This move finished off the polar bear in just a minute and a half. The beast's grip was so strong that Varlins even got a nosebleed. This was just a warm-up before the real showdown. Tank Abbott was the first MMA fighter to have the Mike Tyson effect. That is, the opponents knew they had lost before the gong hit. He was so terrifying. But even the terrifying Tank Abbott was incapable of frightening the beast. Severn despised Tank after seeing his behavior in a fight against John Matua. Severn was a well-mannered farm guy who believed in mutual respect. But this night, he set out to teach Tank, a street bully, a lesson. Tank is known for only having one gear, full throttle. After this unsuccessful passage from Severn, Tank laid on him and began to throw his heavy punches to the body. Let me remind you that in his youth, Abbott was a successful fighter himself, but the beast still pressed him to the cage. Excellent transfer to the ground and poor Tank ended up in a world of darkness. First, Dan used his right hand followed by his elbows to the back of Abbott's head and neck. These strikes are prohibited in modern MMA. A knee to the head and great transitions in the ground. Dan grabbed the foot and drags Tank to the perimeter and refused to give Abbott any chances. Blow after blow, Tank blinked at the camera in Morse code to call for reinforcements with a helicopter, but no one responded. Abbott liked to humiliate his opponents, but Severn took an opportunity to reverse roles terrifying blows with his elbows, which Tank somehow seems to tolerate. That man is made of steel. It was clear, however, that Severn did what he wanted. If he did not like the position, he changed it. Dan continued his ruthless assault of the opponent. Nobody had beaten Tank like this yet. Tank managed to get up and grab the cage, landing a powerful blow with an elbow. Severn lets Tank go, providing him one last chance to throw his cannon strike from the right but the tired swashbuckler was barely on his feet. A great victory for Dan Severn. He showed that a good guy with technique and brains can defeat the powerful bad guy. Tank showed amazing will, but ultimately could not stand up to the task. 
tank withstood Severn's barrage of blows, who threw enough of them to beat an entire football team. In the final, Severn met his old foe, the Russian bear, Oleg Tiktarov. Although the beast was coming off a tough 15-minute fight, Tektarov had also been through hell, defeating Marko Huas in a close fight. But that was how the champion was determined in the old days, drawing on their last bit of strength. Tektarov had a lot of energy for the fight. This was not the inexperienced fighter who performed at UFC 5. As the fight begins, Tektarov instantly took the center of the octagon. Severn begins throwing hands but Taktarov returns fire with a good low kick. The Russian bear attacks, but Severn simply throws him back and goes to work in the clinch. A roll on knee bar, Taktarov attempts a leg lock, and Severn, feeling pain, is on the verge of defeat, but the beast is not easily pacified. Severn counters Taktarov and throws a blow to the face. Taktarov continues to try to grab Severn's leg. Ultimately, history repeats itself and again the Russian finds himself under Sever, an elite fighter. The Beast throws several headbutts, leaving Taktarov to hold on solely through sheer willpower. Taktarov will not just lie down, he continues the fight. The fighters again stand up before each other, but John McCarthy pauses the fight to check Taktarov's wound. Despite frenzied fatigue, the fight continues. Taktarov attacks well in the stance, a good right hook to Severn's jaw. Taktarov clearly looks better in orthodox stance, but is unable to inflict enough damage to snatch victory. The fight goes to the ground where Severn would beat Taktarov to a pulp all the way to the final gong. Twenty-seven continuous minutes of incredible fighting, with advantage to Sever, but Tektarov is given life with three minutes of extra time. Tektarov continues to work in the standing position, but his punches have lost effectiveness. Another submission attempt, encountering a counter-strike from the Beast, and in the end, Severn displays Sugar Ray lettered level footwork, drawing extra time to conclusion. You see Don Fry in Severn's corner, a year before he would begin his reign and conquer the UFC. After an extremely difficult and intense fight, Dan Severn took the victory by decision. The Beast had many eminent, worthy opponents, but following his fights with Oleg Tektarov, Tektarov is the one remembered most. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please be sure to press thumbs up, leave your comments about the fighters you wish to see in the next video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next tournament. Take care.